Okay, well, I guess we're moving along. My, uh, we're going to do, uh, we'll each do five, and we'll go back and forth. Uh, my first one is The Hangover 2. The Hangover 2 is... Uh, I love that movie, Hangover 2. Huh? Oh, you think of The Hangover 1. I didn't like The Hangover 1. And the thing is that I didn't like The Hangover 1. And since The Hangover 2 is exactly the same movie, there's no reason why I should like The Hangover 2. Todd Phillips is a talented guy at some point, which he's now lost. I don't know what happened to him. It's over. Uh, I think these films are obnoxious and unfunny, and The Hangover 2 is more misadventures of the wolf pack. This time they're in uh, Thailand, and they get lost, and there's a monkey. And you know what I don't like about these movies is that there's no wit or cleverness to them. They're just ridiculous and stupid and labored. And that, you know, that feeling of being labored, you get that a lot in sequels, because everybody made a lot of money, on the first one, they figured everyone just wants to see what they saw before. Everyone's phoning in just a little bit more. And so you get a movie that is just totally witness, a uh, witness, totally witless. There's no cleverness to it. It just feels very labored and feels like it's a, it's a heavy comedy because it's not that much fun. And in the end, it's just aggressively bad. And I just hated it, Wade. I hated it. I, I, and you know what? I didn't see it. And I wasn't a big a fan of the original Hangover either. I, I felt it was one of those... One of those movies, you know. Let's let's just think up a bunch of weird stuff and uh, drop a bunch of funny guys in it. And oh, isn't everything's just going to hell? Not not great. So. You know, I'm I'm, I'm no glad reason I want to see that again. I'm glad that there's a place in this world for Zach Galifianakis because he's hilarious, yeah. and we all used to see him perform live, yeah. you know, locally here at Largo and other places. So I'm happy for him. And I have to say that Bradley Cooper, <clears throat> I'm starting to sour on that guy. Yeah, a little bit. You know, well, my worst of choice is Arthur. Uh, Russell Brand is no Dudley Moore. Let's put it that way. This is, this is one of the most, this is one of the most misbegotten films uh, of the last five or six years. And we all knew it. And this is the thing that always amazes me, is that when we hear some film get announced and we go, gosh, that sounds like it's gonna really suck. And then it winds up sucking. You wonder, who are the people who sat in the room and said, oh, that's gonna be great that didn't realize it when the rest of us knew it already in concept stage. Uh, the original Arthur was one of the most charming, original, inventive, sweet, touching, hysterical movies of the 1980s, written and directed by a very talented young director named Steve Gordon. Steve Gordon died soon after the film and uh, never got to have the career that he really deserved. And it's, it's an incredible tragedy. Steve Gordon could have made a dozen, two dozen amazing movies. He could have been one of the great Hollywood dramedy comedy writers of all time. He could have been another Billy Wilder. He didn't have a chance. He only gave us the one really, really great movie. And uh, they had the nerve to take it and say, why don't we reconceptualize this for now and let's put, let's, instead of someone sympathetic like Dudley Moore, let's put someone completely unsympathetic like Russell Brand. Somebody that even Katy Perry can't obviously stand to live with anymore. Um, maybe audiences will really connect with him, and they didn't, and the movie stank, and they threw a lot of money at it, and it made nothing. And now you have to wonder, uh, is somebody going to lose their job over this piece of... something? No. Because okay. you know what? Because the, 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 these movies yeah, are all made for the wrong reason. Hmm. <clears throat> they're, made, they're made for the wrong reason. You know, Steve Gordon yeah. had a film. He had a script. He loved it. He was the shepherd of it. He was the creator of it. Yep. A little film that could. Yeah. Once you get to this... It won an Oscar for an amazing piece of music, by the way. It won an Oscar. And, you know, once you get to the remake, yeah. all these people who are influenced by Arthur, influenced enough to have thought about it over the years and want to yeah. remake it, it's just like, I, I don't know why they, what they saw in it originally. I guess they laughed, but what they didn't see was the heart and the charm. Yeah. You know, because none of that is in this film. It is just a terrible film. And There's... again, Brand is a very unlikable. To me, he's, he's un not that he's not funny, but he's he not is funny. not up to the challenge of this character no. at all. It's just, it never should have been remade. And uh, find another vehicle for him. It's Seriously, all, just, it's all, oh my God, it's Arthur. Uh, uh, older people will see it. Yeah. It's Russell Brand. Younger people will see it. It's a four quadrant hit. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's, a, it's just a piece of crap. Yeah. Um, my next film is Transformers 3. Transformers 3 is... I love that movie. Wait, uh -huh. is, no, yeah. is our best of? You're thinking no. of the artist. Uh, oh, that's the artist. I'm sorry. I get those confused. Transformers 3 <laughs> is, uh, is, is... It was like being eye-raped. <laughs> that's what Transformers 3 was like. I think 
think that's I think it's like you to say. It was huh? like being eye raped. That's that uh, that's the poster. Uh, there you go. That is the poster. And sadly, that's the poster to sell the movie. Yeah, that would be the pull quote. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like being eye raped, and Michael Bay would be like, "Yeah, that's the one." That's, yeah, that's exactly what? what I was going for. It's uh, Michael Bay and uh, that that. But that, only if that pull quote comes from a thirteen year old somewhere in you know Illinois. Thirteen year olds loved it. Yeah. It's 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 that idiot. It was like being eye raped. Says thirteen year old Bucky Brewster. <laughs> Bucky Brewster. Yeah. <laughs> I love. It's that 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 it, Sweet. It's Michael Bay who who never met a sound effect, never met a special effect, never met a robot. Yeah. He couldn't. He couldn't. He didn't like. It's that that idiot twat, whatever his name is. What's that? That little kid, the uh, Shia LaBeouf, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, Go yeah, away. Yeah. You're the worst ever. And yeah. uh, it was just aggressively horribly bad. By the way, I'm not saying that some of the some of the individual effect shots weren't good because they were they were we're talking state-of-the-art stuff but this is just it, it it's just so aggressively fanboy that it just became this this just this experience that just like make it end it's so loud and it's so obnoxious and it's the horrible story that the girl the you know the girl uh, uh, the blonde girl with the, the she was terrible she was hired because she's hot and whatever it, 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 it's just the worst <laughs> don't get me started that's it. That's all I have all to right. say on Transformers 3. Uh, my next worst of choice... Let me, let me preface this by saying, I don't care how much every weed-smoking stoner loves Harold and Kumar because they're so cool. I don't care. Because the first Harold and Kumar film was stupid. And the second one was also stupid. First Harold and Kumar film, worst film of that year. The second one, second worst film of its year. So... It's something of an improvement that uh, th that a very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas is not my worst of film this year. Even though I think it's marginally better than the first one, not as interesting as the second one, it's still bad. It's still stupid. And here's what offends me, and call me cranky, but if the novel idea here is that we are somehow more advanced because we're no longer stereotyping Latinos like back with the uh, the Cheech and Chong film saying like, oh, look how stonery those minorities are, that we're now, oh, oh let's take overachieving minorities. No, Indians and Koreans can be stoners too. They can be just as screwed up as white people. That's not progress to me, people. That's not <laughs> complimentary. That's not the kind of movie we should be making. Uh, I, I, I like the actors. I, I like Zach Penn. I like John Cho. I'd like to see them do better movies. I think these movies are aggressively awful. And I don't want them to make any more. And just because this has a heartwarming Christmas tale to it doesn't save it. And the 3D, irrelevant. Make it go away. So fortunate. You didn't see, didn't see it. it. <laughs> but you are a big fan of Cal Penn in the Obama campaign. Yes, I am. Yes, Cal Penn, not Zach Penn. Cal, Cal Penn. Penn. Yes, Cal Penn. Thank you. Correct. Um, all right. So, um, Wade, there could only be one movie that's next. Well, not it's necessarily. The, it's, what? Wait, where are we at? We got how many? I don't know. Left? I'm reading the list. How many we got left? We're, it's Corey's birthday. Are we at the second to last one? No, no, no. Hit Mark, subscribe. Mark, the oh. next one, the oh, next Mark. one. Okay. We're on Mark. Sorry, my bad. The next huh? is, a, is, a, is a Mark special. Oh, this is Mark. It is? Okay. Yes. Is yeah, it this one? Yeah, Mark's in the wrong Yes, place. that's it. Oh, okay. That's, that's what I thought. I had a feeling you were not at the right one. See, that's yeah. what I get for missing staff meetings. We don't have staff meetings. We don't have staff. We don't have staff. That's the next one. In 20 minutes, we won't have a show. This is what we do. That's what we do. That's it. Okay, um... My uh, next worst film of the year is probably the only film on this list that actually tried to be something. The problem is, is that it tried to be something horrible and was horrible at it. This is a documentary called The Undefeated. This is a um, documentary on Sarah Palin. And the, the reason why the movie is bad is not because the movie was uh, horribly put together as, as a documentary. It's a bunch of talking heads and, and whatever. The movie represents everything that's bad about politics today and everything that's bad about media and how people absorb media. The film is supposedly a corrective to the unfair shake that Sarah Palin has gotten from the horrible uh, liberal mainstream media. So here you have a film that essentially is an hour and a half hagiography, right? Hagiography? Something like that. Listen to you. Get some. Vocabulary Johnny. Yeah. Uh, it's 90 minutes all about how fantastic she is, where you get a bunch of people talking about uh, uh, how she's the greatest politician, she's the greatest mother, 
She was the greatest governor. She'll make the greatest president ever. There's no dissenting opinions, and no one has anything bad to say about her because she's the greatest that ever was. It's a propaganda she's the film. She's undefeated. She's undefeated. It's a propaganda film. And I said this at the time when I talked about it on the show, which is that if somebody made a documentary about Obama that said Obama was the greatest father and the greatest husband and the greatest president and the great, that would be just as bad. You know, I want a documentary that tells both sides of the story. And the fact is that this documentary was made for the wrong reason. And I think it is basically evil because people don't realize what they're watching. They don't realize they're watching propaganda. People, unfortunately, are too stupid. If you watch this show, you're not that stupid. Most people, stupid. They'll look at this and think, oh my gosh, she's fantastic. She's never done anything wrong in her life. She's perfect. It's unbelievable. Well, you know what? You're, you're being pandered to. And that's why I think the film is uh, not only just bad, but it's also everything that's wrong with politics and media today, The Undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely, though. It's Very well so done. Lovely. Yes, I have a little, little cartoon there that I drew as well. Very good. All right, wait, what's next for you? Well, you know what's next for me is something that's also next for you. What? The last two films we share. Mark and I hated two films. I think we know so much. <laughs> they wound up being our two worst films of the year. One of them we share them. One of them is the only thing we've ever done on this show that even possibly a little bit went viral. And 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 it's got you nominated for some awards. The We're nominated for three awards. I Woo! AWTV. Hang on, it's awards. the uh, I wrote AWTV. It down. What is it? I will be there to accept. Mark, if if you. Right now, what is your speech to the IWTV if you win? You didn't want to know what my thing would be. Oh, I thought you had So it. long, suckers. That's what my speech All right, be. I'll write that down. You say so long, suckers. Say. so long, suckers. <laughs> All right, what is your oh. second to last, second to worst film of the year? Wade's got to film. say. Wade the deserves second, to say it. The second to last. Second to worst film. Second, second to worst film of 2011. The second to worst film is the one that I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, oh, it's got to be the worst. Second to worst is actually Sucker Punch. Ooh. The film that so enraged me that I, I now will live in infamy based on the rant that I, I <laughs> delivered on this show. Uh, which is people still, I, just random people walk up to me on the sidewalk and go, you're that Sucker Punch rant guy, aren't you? <laughs> so, I, they don't? I, I think they do. Sure they, they do. don't? Sure they do. When did that happen? Ever. Give me an example. Mark does not Outside. believe that people actually Outside. saw it. not randomly on the streets. It happened. To me, it happened to me at uh, Universal City Walk. I was walking along, and some some strange person from Iowa walked up and said, "You're that sucker punch See? Right person." <laughs> you are you are essing me. You of are. course I am. So anyway, <laughs> it's happened to me. Oh, it has. It? Yes, it has. You were probably at some internet nah, or something. I hate internet people. Anyway, no, the <laughs> second worst film for us both is Sucker Punch. And look, I mean, Zack Snyder is just a, he's a dreadful, wretched director. He has one gimmick, which is uh, shoot in slow motion, then speed it up on the impact, and then slow it down again so we can watch the coolness after the impact. Yeah. Slow, speed up slow. Slow, speed up slow. Yawn. It's a horrible movie. It thinks that it's some kind of feminist anthem with all of its little fantasy sequences with, you know, strippers how shooting guns and hot pants and all kinds of <laughs> Why exotic, is that a fantasy? fantastic... How, how, how is that somehow... It's like a female empowerment <coughs> movie. How like, is that know. like an empowerment film when the girls are dressed in fishnets? Because they're, that they're shooting, they're shooting like weird mecho zombies in World War One trenches and all kinds of other cool things and they're escaping their oppressive male-dominated, patriarchal prison world. In it's fishnets. Like, in fishnets. They, 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 they didn't saying. want them to wear fishnets. It's, it's they wanted the to wear stockings. Thing. They went, no, no, we'll do fishnets. Exactly. It's so, F it's, you, man. It's so <laughs> hypocritical. It's so shallow. It's so awful and over-stylized. And, and it's just, it's lame. And that's it. I ranted about it once. I'm not going to rant about it that's again. So yes, rewatch that rant and subscribe to it. Huh? Yes, right now. Yes, there's obviously. The boom, there's the link. Please watch that and uh, keep it going because people love that. And stop Wade when you see him at Universal, especially if you're from Iowa. I, I, you know what? I knew he wasn't telling the truth. Um, the all worst right. movie of the year. There it is. What movie can be worse than Wade and Mark possibly hate more than no Sucker way, Punch. What movie was so terrible, 
so unenjoyable, such an offense to all of our sensibilities that Wade and Mark actually both said that movie is worse than Sucker Punch. What movie is it? Yeah, Corey. Can Corey's raising its hand. Corey, Corey wants, wants it's Corey's guess. birthday. He wants to guess. It's his guess. Go ahead. Birthday yeah. boy. Is it the artist? <laughs> I think it's easy. No, that's my, that's Speaking my of which, of check out our best of 2011 yes. show. Yes. I right. think Wade and I should say the same thing. I'm going to say three, two, one, then we'll say it. Yes. Three, two, one. Your, Your Highness. Highness. <laughs> the worst movie of 2011. Oh. My. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was a, there, you know what, there's a man, wait, there's a man. That's how much he hated it. The man's name is David Gordon Green. Who was so, who once upon a time was so talented. He, yes. This is like, look, this is what this is like watching, if you've, if you've followed David Gordon Green's career where he made George Washington and we thought, oh, this guy, he's, he like, he loves Terrence Malick, he's this young, incredibly talented kind of cinematic prodigy. He's going to be making these great poetic films forever. And then he winds up making crap like this. Like, Pineapple Express was the beginning of the end, and then this. It's like, it's like if Michelangelo had said, you know, I think I want to do porn. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. Something wrong with that? Like, like wh where, did, where, did he, where did he go wrong? Uh, you know, when they, when they uh, back up the truck... And give him lots of money, money he yeah. doesn't make by by making I George guess. Washington. <laughs> he makes it by making the Pineapple Express and crap like Your Highness. And you know what? I I blame David Gordon Green, but I also blame Danny McBride. I not, well, I I here's what I blame. I blame the people who say, "Oh, Danny McBride, he's uh, he's got you know a hit TV show and he's like in movie." M sure, we'll greenlight a movie that he wrote without any development, without any oversight, without anybody even passing critical judgment on the screenplay. Look, this movie sucks in the screenplay format. Uh, this is all this is is an attempt to do one of these anachronistic juvenile comedies where it's supposed to be funny because it's kind of like a Lord of the Ringsy fantasy, but they're all making modern day weed jokes and sex jokes and double entendres, and it's funny because it's like out of context. If Mel Brooks does that, it's funny because Mel Brooks is, is, knows how to make that stuff funny. You know, Young Frankenstein is funny. Blazing Saddles is funny. Even Men in Tights as lame as it is, has its moments. There's nothing clever or funny about this, not even remotely. It's well, a bad <laughs> screenplay. It's a bad concept. Because there's a difference between bad humor made by clever people. Clever yes. people know that this isn't that it's 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 bad uh, humor, and that's part of the fun uh, of it. And then there's bad humor made by people who aren't funny, and that's where you get into trouble. Yeah. Because they have no comic sensibility, and yet what they think they're doing is hilarious. And the thing is that they're not funny, and what they're doing is not only not hilarious, it, 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 it is aggressively unfunny. This was such an excruciating moment. You and I and two of our colleagues, Tim Cockshell and Andy Klein, we all sat in the back row of the Arclight. It was the Arclight, it wasn't was. it? It was. It was the Arclight. We all sat in the back row of the Arclight, where we usually enjoy the opportunity of throwing up the armrests and stretching out and taking a little nap in the middle of a bad movie. It's the advantage of the Arclight, folks. The, the back, back row, throw up those armrests. You can kill... 60 minutes out of a bad movie very easily. Um, I, I think all four of us were just dumbfounded throughout this whole thing. We were just well, dumbfounded. Well, you know what, because Every scene it has no pace to it. The thing is that it is so flabby, there is no pace to the film. It's essentially just saying, mm. let's just put on a show, let's just do that funny pot joke because we think it's funny because we're stoned right now editing it, so it's got to be funny. And, and it, there, there, there's no sense of how it works within the flow of the piece. It's such a waste of so many great talents. I love Zoe Deschanel. I love Zoe Deschanel. Why is she in this movie? Why is Natalie Portman in the film? Don't get it. Don't get it. Well, there you go. That is our worst film of 2011, folks. Your Highness. Look at that. It's, it's our version of a Razzie. There is a question. There are a lot yeah. of questions in the chat room. Why not Jack and Jill? Oh. In the YouTube and Ustream chat rooms are wondering what the hell happened to Jack and Jill. Did I see Jack and Jill? What was that? Which one that was, was that? That was the whole Adam, Adam Sandler as his girl. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, you know what? We didn't see it. Didn't, didn't see, see it. it. You didn't know why? That's probably, that's probably the worst film that I just knew would be the worst film yeah. of the year. No, like, there was. Well, we, we, did, we did do a thing here on the show where we reviewed the trailer. 
Yeah. Yes. Right? And that was just. It was brilliant. It, it was just, it, it, by it, seeing it, that, I can't. I can't believe anyone would, would would see it. So yeah, why would you see that movie? Yeah, I, I have no interest in that film. No. And look, I mean, there are certainly a lot of horrible movies that we didn't see. Thank goodness. But these are the worst ones that we had to sit through. That's it. So that's it. That's so it. Uh, uh, hit share, hit like, hit share, hit like. All the films that we mentioned, don't <laughs> rent them. Don't see them projected. Don't give money to anybody. Don't even buy them so you can burn them. Just Punish walk them. away. Don't, don't them. buy them, rent them, or even burn Don't sucker if, punch them. If you, them. Walk, if you walk into a room and a friend or a loved one is watching any of these movies, <laughs> physically hurt them <laughs> until they stop. <laughs> you are doing them a you favor. You are calling for violence is what you're doing. It's true. You're doing them All a right. favor. It's what's called violent intervention. <laughs> It's the Do Arab them. Spring of movies. It we is. are going to just, just yes. pick it Arab and Spring rattle movies. the cages of the man yes. until he makes good movies. Yes. yes. Why blow $35 million on your highness, whatever the hell it costs? You know? You know how many great movies could have been made for that money? It's, it's uh, unbelievable. So, um, and that had to be twice as much as the artist. Really quick, oh, you, yeah. you call 2010 the worst year in movies. Yes. 2011? Uh, I would say 2010 is the worst year ever. 2009, second worst. 2005, probably third worst. 2011, 2011 was um, no. 2011's right. an improvement. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, 2011 wow. an improvement. That's, uh, that's truly an amazing thing to say. I, I didn't think you'd say that. Tree of Life, The Artist, Take Shelter. Well, watch uh, those on the best I mean, of. Watch those on the other. Yeah. That's Which right. Uh, we did a best of 2011, yeah, and check that, that out for some great vinyl suggestions. And in the meantime, uh, sub uh, uh, hit subscribe and check, check out the best of show. Thank you to the uh, to the crew, the best crew in the history of the internet. Woo! Thanking uh, thanking them for this, making all this happen. Wait, thank you. Uh, don't want to forget you. Um, what? <laughs> all right, everybody. Good night. <laughs>